universe, welcome. Welcome all those of you that are new to the channel. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the bell icon so that you don't miss anything. And thank you to all those of you uh, that have been following us now for a while. We're fielding a request and you can keep them coming. Today the question is, how do I defend myself with this cane if I were taken down and find myself on the floor? And so uh, that is a reality. People fall all the time and not, sometimes they fall by themselves. And so it, it is in your best interest regardless of where you are in the timeline of your training. And especially if there are uh, physical injuries and or limitations. We got to face this to we, we We have to be prepared and, and know that anything can happen. Uh, these days with everything that's going on, even people trying to get away, right? So there's a shooting, boom, you get knocked over. What's the most efficient way to get up from there, right? Because they're going to trample you or you got pushed. Well, what comes next is not pretty and you need, we want you on your feet. You're going to be more uh, effective, obviously, uh, on your feet. And so we're not uh, covering mixed martial arts and this is not a sport. This is about uh, self-protection and survival at the end of the day and so uh, we'll take it from that uh, from that perspective first and foremost there are certain exercises that every caner should practice regularly and have the ability to do and now is the time to see the, the big word the idea is not hey it's a dangerous world out there uh, I, I'm, I'm afraid I'm not gonna go out I'm not gonna put a, a foot out there that's paranoia and there's no place for that that's not what we want for you we want preparedness and preparedness uh, includes going and doing certain exercises so that you are prepared in the event that something like this happens one of those is the ability to go from this seated position in essence a squat where you can uh, uh, come up from there and do it without throwing out your back right and so I, I've demoed this uh, in, in the past and that's where you're going to have your feet slightly wider than shoulder width apart. You could put your cane as a, as a tripod and you're going to sit back and then push, use your arms to get up from there. Uh, that's one thing. The other one is you want to work on your grip, on your grip strength. And yes, uh, the cane and maneuvering the cane and particularly a heavier cane, that helps with your grip. But so is hanging, right, from a chin-up uh, bar. Uh, there are tools these days that you can go ahead even on your back and pull yourself up as is an equalizer, something that looks like this, that you put on the floor, you go under and you pull yourself up. That works on your grip, hanging there, you know, working your way up to a minute and so on and so forth. That is essential, why? Because it helps with tool retention and it ties into what we're going to demonstrate here. So the first thing I wanna cover, and we'll, uh, we're gonna, working with us, we have uh, Akiko, who's our um, head instructor here at the Miami headquarters, but. What if you find yourself on the floor? Maybe you slipped, you fell, and you got pushed, and here we come. So the first thing that we want to cover is having that recovery position. And uh, move in a little bit closer here, but uh, we're not going to go into great detail. I've, dem I've demonstrated this before, and it's over on Kane Self Defense University in our courses. But the idea is to take, if, if you put yourself in this situation and say, get up from there, this is what the average person does. See how he comes up here and you look at that and you say, of course, I would do the same thing. Look at it again in slow motion, right, when he comes up. This is how the average person who goes to the floor goes to get up. But if I push you down and I see this happening and you come this way, I will go ahead and kick you in the head. I mean, I'm a criminal, that's what I do. And once you're knocked out, then I can do whatever I want with you. I can take your wallet and, and, and anything else. So instead of coming forward towards this, what you wanna do is create space and bring, say it to yourself, the feet to the hands. So the feet are gonna to move towards the hand and that there he creates space. So if I were here, I pushed him down, I'm coming. Now, oh, see, he's got that one free hand that he can strike with. So your power shot template still works. You're gonna have bone <laughs> here exposed and then he still has to be able to do this. Now, some of you are looking at that and you say, I can't get up like that young man. And I get that, I get that. Two things that I want you to be able to do. The first one is work on being able to pivot down here and with one hand, like a clock, be able to move out of your and strike and back off and back off and then until you have the opportunity to do this one thing. Be careful of putting the cane out here because your assailant will go ahead and take it. 
from there. So that's not what we want. We want that cane moving. The second thing is to use the cane. Some of you may use the cane to actually get up. And you see how he chooses one spot and pushes up. What happens now when you get taken to the floor? Right? And that's where I'll come in here. So go ahead and tilt here uh, a, a little bit. I'm going to come here to the floor. And I'm going to keep this real simple. You know, over 10 years ago, American Cane Self-Defense was the first to put out the Canaconda video uh, uh, DVD. It's still in there. It's part of the classical collection now available at Cane Self-Defense University. And it's all with dealing with cane uh, grappling on the floor. So I'm going to keep this real simple and give you two possibilities. There are others, but these are the two main ones. Kiko, we're going to come from this uh, side here. But you hit the floor. Uh, one or two main things. I'm going to cover the one that's, that's uh, really... It's gonna, you're going to find yourself in a worse position. You came up here. You can get up. He, you find yourself in this situation in a mount position. This is horrible. Let's get the cane out of here for a second so you understand what the problem is. He can either choke. He can strike. I can't hit him. My head hits here. I'm knocked out, and now I'm done. So rule number one is don't let go of your cane. Don't let go of your cane to deal with this. If you let go of your cane and you drop it, either he might use it against you, uh, but And you're going to have to cover your head. That's, that's the primary uh, thing that we want to do is protect the computer. If I put this in here automatically, notice that his reaction is to go ahead and grab it. Now, that's not a bad thing because I know where his, hand, his hands are. My concern is when he lets go and he's reaching for a weapon or something else, right? So there's several things that I'm going to do. My cane is going to come up here, let go and start wielding his throwing punch. See how I can catch here? I can catch here with two hands cover my head and come up a little bit. Here's where I want you to focus on. Watch how I take my foot and very, without causing a lot of, uh, not alerting him to it, I just go ahead and reach it out and pin that leg. My other leg is going to push up and while he's holding on here or throwing the punches, let's assume, and I'm protecting my, my head and I'm doing this and striking, right? Because this is aircraft grade aluminum. This is a Raven cane and I'm striking with this here. As I pin here, I'm going to lift and topple. When I do this, slide down a little bit here. When I do this now, look at the position now. So now I can start going to town with this cane. Now, if he does this, which is where he puts you in the guard, see how he pulls me forward and I have to? Guys, use those elbows. Dig in. So you're going to dig in right in here. See that quick tap? And now you can get to work in here. You can go right to the groin through here. Um, right? So it's a variety of things that you can do. What if he does uh, lock up and you have here? Well, it's an impact tool. Use it. See the quick tapping? And I'm not even trying, guys. I'm not even trying. Right? So there's a variety uh, anatomically uh, uh, targets here that you can go to and gain that advantage to get up and out of here and strike and go. The second uh, situation that you may find yourself in is actually more advantageous and that's when you can go ahead and put him in the guard. So you hit and immediately you lock your feet, right? Ladies, you say, I'm not big, he's a big guy, I can't. You still gotta go around here and lock it up. Now when you do this, I'll put the cane to the side for a second. Not only, now when he goes to throw a punch, I can use my legs to go ahead and deviate the punch, but I have my cane, so guess what? I can start using that cane. This I gotta go very gentle with because wherever you catch with the horn, that's what this horn was designed for. It's innocuous looking. It's designed to create a quick release response regardless of where uh, you put this. And so now what if he takes it, all right, both hands, just always remember this, we're going to the midline, to the midline. See how he has to let go? You go to the middle, let go. Now start pushing, creating distance, and find bone. Because if I'm able to whack the wheels here, right, malleolus, right, and the side of the knee, if I can do that and come up. Now, thank you for that, Kiko. Um, now it gives me a better opportunity to get up from there. So we're, we've kept it very simple. There's a variety of scenarios. You take these skill sets and you put it in an actual scenario. There are scenarios that include what we call a uh, loose cane uh, decision and a loose cane scramble where you lose the cane and now you have to prevent him from getting it and it escalates. And that's all part of American cane self-defense reality-based uh, training and scenarios. But two uh, possibilities there, not letting go of your cane 
and uh, having this motion, understanding the principles that when you put the cane out there, the natural, it's like a, a fish. He goes for it, he puts it there because he's trying to take it away. You know how to control the center, create. Right? I'm showing you the potential and the possibility. How do you learn these things? How do you get started? Uh, even before this, how do you learn about how to handle this cane, retain it, go into a power shop mode up here, and try to prevent going down to the floor? You know, you, you can't go, I always say, from beginning guitarist to Eric Clapton overnight. There is a, a gap in there, and that's what we do with American Cane Self-Defense. So here's what I want you to do. You're a rank beginner, you're experienced, uh, you're an instructor right now looking for a curriculum. You want to bring this uh, to your audience. I want you to text the letters CCC, which stand for Cane Clarity Call. Text 305-745. 7839. The ACSD team will schedule our call in less than 24 hours. Have a paper uh, and a pen ready to take some notes because we will give you a blueprint as to what it takes uh, to get trained regardless of where you're starting off at, but you will have a tangible plan so that every time you pick up this tool, you know exactly what to train in so that you're moving the progress needle forward. Thank you again, as always. Um, I hope that this was uh, insightful for the individual who requested it. And uh, thank you so much always for watching. Keep caning. Stay safe.